Today here, what I'm going to do in a video for people, because people keep asking me to do a video on the original post that I made for converting it to a 4-pin versus a PCM controlled, um, what I'm going to do is just uh, tell you exactly how to do it in with a video and verbalize each, uh, each step here. Um, generally, what you're going to have is a cover. It'll look pretty similar to this. Um, there's going to be four, three 8-millimeter nuts on the back. You're going to remove those. Obviously, don't lose the nuts. You'll need them to put, put it back on later. Then underneath, you'll see this. Uh, there might be some slight variances in where the plug outlet is or what plug outlet it is. Um, brush holder design might be different. This might be open here. Um, you might see different heads of screws. Um, I use T20s. Um, other ones, some guys will use like uh, Phillips. Um, other guys will use Allen's. It's really just dependent on what you have. The OEM is always Phillips. Um, so what I'll do here first is just take off the T20 screws. That'll obviously come out generally between like 13 and 14 millimeters. So if you're doing it by hand and don't have an impact, just it does take a while because it is a pretty fine thread. And I'll take the uh, Phillips screws off next. I always take the brush holder off separate from the regulator. Um, that's just a preference for me just because I've had points where it's easier to take the brush holder off if it's an older unit because sometimes there's a little bit of corrosion here versus trying to hold the regulator in your hand while you're taking these screws off. If you break this little plastic leg, it's pretty much over. You just have to order another another brush holder and et cetera with the unit. And um, generally, this is going to depend on if it's OEM or if it's or if it's aftermarket. Um, this particular regulator is OEM and was welded. I already broke it off just because it's it's kind of a pain to do that in a video. Um, what I'll generally do is take a pair of dikes or side cutters or whatever you want to call them and uh, pry the weld off, fold it over, and then pry it again, and then it'll, it'll pop off just like this, where it won't be actually cut or broken, and you'll still have something usable to connect the new regulator connection to. Um, this is considered a uh, AC stator cap, and this is what tells uh, the regulator what RPM the alternator is spinning at. It, it's, there's different functions for it. There's RPM, and, uh, and just sometimes it'll use a turn-on signal. Like your self-exciting regulators will use this. This is actually what it uses to turn it on. That'll actually transfer through a diode internally to the regulator, and that's what tells it to kick on, which is why a lot of times when that diode fails, that's when you see spiking or a regulator failure where it just doesn't turn on at all. Another reason why I don't really particularly like self-exciting regulators. Um, so back to what I was saying before about how some of these will be connected versus soldered or non. I solder them. Some guys will just crimp this connection. And technically, I guess that's okay. I'm just always worried about uh, corrosion and failure due to something like that. So what I will do is just solder it. Um, I have these, uh, these tweezer style soldering. You can use a regular soldering iron, but do recommend not using 6040 solder. You can, it's just a lot of people do get alternators to like the three, 400 degree range, which is enough to melt that solder, which wouldn't be very good in that situation. So obviously with these, I would just tweeze this and solder it versus, uh, versus your soldering iron. You would want to put like obviously wet the tip and then, uh, you know, put it on a nice surface area and then just solder there. And then for, as far as reinstalling the brush holder, there's going to be, you're going to generally, this is what I'll send you an OEM brush holder from Denso. Uh, it will have the a hole here and a hole here. I will take a brush pin. You can use a paper clip. You can use just about anything. Basically, what you'll do is you'll stick your finger in this hole here to hold the brushes back. You can't see there. You can hold the brushes back. I mean, you can even fit your thumb in there if you got even. I got pretty fat fingers too. You can still fit it in there. You can use a flathead if your fingers don't fit in there. That's fine too. And you're basically just going to hold it back. And then insert this pin into it. It's kind of hard to do when keep it on camera while I'm holding it. And that's going to go right back on there. And then you'll just basically reverse the process. Um, like I said, I usually put the... Uh, it's going to be basically the reverse, right? So you took the brush holder off first. Now you're going to put the regulator in first. 
So you have your T20, your Phillips, and your other two Phillips for the brush holder. Sorry for my bench being such a mess. Just finished building a couple of alternators. If you have, if you don't under, these screws are not very durable, so you do not want to just like really crank down on them. Um, I have a, a torque bar on my impact where it it limits how much torque I can do. Obviously, if I go gung ho, it'll still break it, but it it basically limits the torque going onto it. And you've seen those on like if you're a mechanic, you've seen those on like lug nuts and stuff like that, where shops will have those. But I mean, obviously, as you can see, I mean, it is that simple. It's not something. A lot of people send their alternators in to get this done. That's what this customer did. Um, sent me an alternator in to swap the regulator for him. I don't charge people extra on top of what I'd normally charge, but you do have to pay for the shipping back and forth, and you do have to wait. Obviously, the, the way faster method is you just do what I did here. It, I mean, I was fumbling around with my tools trying to hold the camera at the same time. It, it really is that easy. I mean, it, it took me five minutes, and that was, again, fumbling around and, and talking the entire time. Um, you could really could do this yourself if you've never done it before. And if it takes you longer than 15 minutes, God bless your soul. Cause that's not good, <laughs> but, but it shouldn't be, it should take you no longer than 10 minutes. Realistically. Um, and obviously the removal and inst reinstallation of the alternator is a pain in the butt, but you'd have to do that if you send it to me anyways. Um, and people, the reason why people get this stuff done is for, if they want to charge higher, this regulator here is set for 14.8. Whereas this one was PCM controlled and actually telling, having the customer's alternator drop down to around 12.6, 12.8. And he's running the uh, a new uh, Limitless G30. So that generally you want to be at 14.8 plus. I'm going to include uh, two diodes in the harness form when I send it back. So it'll charge around like 15.3, 15.4 form, which is a pretty safe voltage for most vehicles. Um, obviously, I say most vehicles as, a, as more of a disclaimer so people don't try to charge at like 15.6 on everything because there are some cars that really don't like that um if you have any questions uh just go ahead and fire away in the comments um again i'd like just like my previous video i'd like any questions you have to be on that actual on this actual post versus being on in my inbox just because my inbox is flooded with tons of stuff all the time and i can't get back to you as quickly as i can and, and simple questions like this in the comments that and a lot of times someone will see a comment and see my answer and they'll answer their questions so they don't have to message me um, and that'll obviously help out other people in the future. Um, if you, again, any questions, just let me know in the comments. Thank you. Bye.